Mum. Mrs. Harris, <laughs> Your Royal Highness Princess Margaret. I know, it's a bit of a, a um, cross-section of characters, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Your Royal Highness. Yes, I well, mean, really, where was the bow? When where I, was the bow, It yes. didn't happen, did it? Well, I could struggle with a curtsy for you, but my <laughs> posterior chain isn't what it was, Leslie, so I don't think I'd get down there. Uh, the Crown, of course, eagerly anticipated. Uh, quite a passionate response already from people who yet to even see it. Yes. Do you think that was inevitable mm. because it is focusing on a time of such tumult and, and, and pain, I suppose, for the royal family? You know, that the decade, of course, that we all remember so mm. vividly. It was a very difficult decade, the 90s, for many members of the royal family. And obviously, that's what our drama is, is depicting. Um, and I think that, um, you know, there's no doubt about it, the death of our beloved majesty uh, has kind of put a focus on the series, I suppose, that um, it was, was inevitable. Um, yeah, so that, that it, it's hotly awaited. We all know what happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it is fairly recent history. We absolutely know what happened, but what, what Netflix is doing with The Crown, Peter Morgan is doing with The Crown, is not making a documentary. You know, we are making a drama that is based on the royal family and the events that are so well known of that time. But, you know, it has to be stressed that it is a drama. And the focus on Princess Margaret this particular um, season, yeah. obviously. Uh, again, a character who was notoriously the most royal of the royals. She wanted to be treated as a royal, you know. she If protocol went down the plug hole, she wasn't happy about it. But within, the, within that framework, she was also very... Uh, she had a wild side, you know, she had a free side. And when she was with her friends, um, she was very comfortable. You know, she did want even her closest friends, friends to curtsy to her and do all that at the beginning, which you have to do. And then when you've done the curtsy, it, it, it's like two normal friends having an evening. And she, she did enjoy a very full social life. Um, but, but this season of The Crown, season five, you know, she's, she's getting older and she's entering a period of her life that is quieter. She's, she's made a conscious decision to uh, be supportive of her sister and work a bit more tirelessly in support of her sister. Uh, she doesn't have a husband anymore. She doesn't have a partner. So th there's a loneliness about her in our, in our story. Um, but she's definitely devoting more of her time to being um, a working royal. Your mates with Dame Judy, of course, who's been very vocal about how she perceives the crown. Imelda as the Queen is extraordinary. Mm, isn't and, but you've she? all been pals for years. Yeah, so decades. It... But because we're such good friends, that whole thing of creating these two sisters who were so close, we didn't really have to work on that that much. And Margaret is bearing the brunt of the brutal reality that, you know, the Queen's children now are getting divorced. They are able to get divorced and separate. They are able to remarry. And she wasn't even allowed to marry the person that she wanted to. I think it's safe to say there's some fireworks. It attracts such amazing actors because you get to play these wonderful characters. But it's not like the responsibility is with you every single episode. Uh, an absolute <laughs> joy to meet you. God bless Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best with it. Thank you, Richard. Thank you.